22, which we've seen a lot of commercials on. Oh my God. Yeah, they have, and they really, and they, and they, and did you notice they put all the minorities, like, it's like, because minorities can only be, you know, flight attendants, uh, Uber drivers, only be, you know, the baggage claim people. We, we can't be lawyers and doctors. So they, 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 that, that's what they go for. But Proposition 22 would classify drivers for Uber, Lyft, and other app-based companies as independent contractors. It would also enact several new labor policies specifically for app-based companies by guaranteeing an hourly wage and some benefits. The Yes campaign with major contributions from Uber, Lyft, and DoorDash has raised more than $180 million. The mostly non-union-backed um, no campaign has raised about $5 million. Mm -hmm. Prop 2 doesn't give drivers sick leave, unemployment, benefits, or workers workmen's compensation, and lets Uber, Lyft, and other companies get away with not paying into Social Security or Medicare. So earlier this month, Uber sent a series of push notifications and in-app messages to drivers and riders urging them to vote yes on 22. Now a group of drivers have filed a lawsuit seeking class action status against the company, accusing it of breaking the law with those app blasts and calling them unlawfully coercive and threatening. Through their lawyer, the drivers bringing the suit said the barrage of corporate propaganda left them feeling like they had no choice but to vote yes. And I, I'm going to vote no on this. But you've seen yep. Marshall. Yeah, the the so a couple of things I wanted to say about this. One is, uh, you know, one of the arguments that people are making for voting yes on on Proposition Twenty Two is to say that drivers should have the option. Maybe some drivers don't want to be employees because they want they like the flexible hours, etc. But here is the thing. When you are being coerced, like uh, like that lawsuit, uh, like that lawsuit says, uh, you don't really have much of a choice, right? And and secondly, Uber can choose to give employees flexible hours so that every driver uh, can still have the flexibility in their schedule because ultimately it's about supply and demand, and the demand is going to be there during during uh, you know when people get off work, when people well before COVID, when people were uh, going home from going out, and so and so that to me is a is a null argument. Uh, it's a null argument. But the biggest thing for this proposition that I just want to impart is that corporations corporations should not be writing laws. That is the number one thing about this uh, about this proposition. Corporations have no business writing the laws for the people of this country, and that is what's happening with Proposition Twenty Two. Uber um, and Lyft and, and other uh, other app services like that. Uh, just to give you a really quick example, in Austin, Texas, they, uh, the city of Austin wanted Uber to fingerprint their drivers as a safety measure. And Uber didn't want to do it because they didn't want to spend the extra money uh, doing that. And so then they spent a shitload of money uh, lobbying against this law. Ultimately, uh, Uber was kicked out of Austin, Texas for a while. And then Uber said, screw you, Austin, and went to the state. And so then they lobbied at the state level where they were able to pass a law that benefited them and, 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 and by doing so, bypassing the city of Austin. And so the biggest thing is that corporations should not have a hand in writing laws. Yeah. Yeah, hundred percent. I, I think this is above all of the other props. I mean, the di dialysis one is pretty clear, but when you just look at who's who's putting the money and you know everything you need to know about this entire thing, I'm really worried about this one in particular because those ads are so pervasive and manipulative, and the people they choose to put out there, um, it's just so dishonest. And they're they're putting pressure on their own uh, drivers. They're putting pressure on their drivers to try to convince the people that they're picking up. Um, to, to support this and all of it designed to give them carve outs from the sorts of state laws that every, every other employer has to abide by. And I don't know how much money it's worth to them, but if they can put together $187 million uh, for this, uh, I can speculate that it's worth a lot of money. I saw um, the coalition to pass this is now the most expensive California ballot measure since 1992. 
And this mm -hmm. is a state where we love massive, expensive ballot measure campaigns. This is, you got to go back decades to, to, to see something on the, on the scale of this. And it's worth so much money to those drivers um, that this goes the right way. Uh, but I am, but I am very worried about this one because of how well funded um, the campaign is. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's, I saw that comment about where have the no on twenty two ads been? Well, the no, the no has been funded by mostly unions, right? And so there have been some small ads, but they don't have the you know hundreds of millions of dollars that Uber has, which is why you're seeing so many more vote yes on Proposition twenty two ads. And so, like John, I am very worried because I think that. Um, the way that they are advertising for for yes on it is um is very uh sleep very it's very it's very wrong the way that they're doing this right they have like a mom you know kids how she likes the flexibility and so i'm worried about it but i i do hope that people are, are taking the time to really look into what what it means and um, i hope it doesn't pass